Any doctor must be well versed with anemia. You were talking about the classification of anemia. Anemia is classified in many ways. One of them is on the basis of etiology. Means that what is the cause of anemia? Anemia means a degree in hemoglobin, which means that either the production is normal. When the RBCs they come into circulation, they have normal 120 days life, and the concentration of hemoglobin within RBC is normal. It means the person is normal. The one reason that you have anemia is that the RBCs do not stay in the circulation for 120 days. The last time I told you, they do not stay in circulation for 120 days because the RBCs are lost due to trauma. And I told you that this loss of RBC, which is called hemorrhage, it is acute hemorrhage or it is chronic hemorrhage. So you can have anemia due to acute blood loss, you can have anemia due to chronic blood loss. If you look at hemoglobin, it consists of heme and globin. If the building material of hemoglobin is not available to the body, or it is not synthesized, or the building material of hemoglobin, one of the components, is deficient in the body, you are going to have less hemoglobin and the most important building material in the synthesis of hemoglobin are iron. If you have deficiency of iron in the body, you're going to develop anemia. You're going to develop anemia. Less hemoglobin will be formed, which we discussed last time. So iron deficiency, anemia. If you talk about classification on the basis of decreased availability of building material of hemoglobin, the most important component in hemoglobin synthesis is iron. If you have deficiency of iron, you are going to develop an anemia that is called iron deficiency anemia. And iron deficiency anemia, mind it, 99% of anemia, 90, I am not exaggerating, but it might be exaggerated figure, just to impress that how important it is, 99% of anemia people having in our society are due to iron deficiency anemia. Just to impress on you the importance of iron deficiency anemia. The second component which is deficient often is vitamin B12 and folic acid. These are also building material, not building material, but they help you in the division of the cell 
division of the hemopoietic cells normoblast if they don't divide you will not have production of rbc and those rbcs which are formed they are bit larger containing large amount of hemoglobin so so far the building material is concerned we have iron deficiency anemia we have vitamin b12 deficiency anemia and we got folic acid deficiency anemia we can have anemia not because of deficiency of this building material not because that rpcs are not produced by bone marrow but you have anemia because the rbcs when they come into circulation they do not achieve full life of 120 days they get destroyed and circulation before they achieve 120 days full life means that an rbc which is supposed to live 120 days in circulation it may live for 20 days for 30 days for some reason they don't reach to up to 120 days life it is because they are broken down and normally of course once a cell normal rbc achieves 120 days life it is broken down it is recycled it is broken down in reticulo endothelial system if you see the normal physiology normal function of the blood and you look at rbcs once the rbc come into circulation they are called reticulocyte a name given to rbc which is coming into circulation is called reticulocyte which remains for one or two days and then it becomes mature rbc and afterward this rbc will lives 120 days in the circulation and after 120 days it will be trapped it will be trapped into reticulo endothelial system which is found in spleen in liver in lymph node but the main area of reticulo endothelial system is found in spleen they are nothing but macrophages they are nothing but macrophages so these old abscesses are trapped by ophagocytes by these reticulo endothelial cells they break the abscess hemoglobin is released in macrophages hemoglobin hemoglobin then splits into heme part and globin part globin part is further recycled into amino acid by action of enzyme and heme part the iron is separated with the formation of bilirubin iron is stored and used for further formation of hemoglobin for the next uh, rbcs in bone marrow and bilirubin is released into circulation then it is taken to the liver here this bilirubin is conjugated and then it is excreted to the bile duct so this is a brief cycle of the how an rbc which is broken down is recycled but it will only happen when an rbc has achieved 120 days life if rbc is broken before 120 days you can imagine that you are going to have decrease number of rbc in turn you are going to have anemia 
and this is called hemolytic anemia hemolytic anemia hemolytic anemia means anemia due to premature premature rupture of rbc or premature lysis of rbc now this premature destruction of rbc will result into decrease in number of rbc in your circulation and of course either you have less hemoglobin in rbc or you have normal hemoglobin in rbc but decrease in number of rbc in both condition you are going to have decreased concentration of rbc a decreased concentration of hemoglobin means that you are going to develop anemia but here because of destruction of rbc this is called hemolytic anemia hemolytic anemia if destruction of rbc occurs in circulation if destruction of rbc occurs in circulation it is called intravascular hemolysis and if destruction of rbc occurs not in circulation but in reticuloendothelial cells which are found plenty of them in spleen and in liver it is called extravascular hemolysis again i repeat hemolysis of premature hemolysis of rbc occurs when it occurs in circulation it is called intravascular hemolysis when it occurs in reticuloendothelial cells in spleen it is called extravascular hemolysis this hemolysis this abnormal hemolysis is of two types it means that hemolytic anemia is broadly classified into two types if it it is a result of if this hemolysis this premature hemolysis is the result of a disease which is an acquired disease which is an acquired disease we will talk about later on but are those acquired disease it is called acquired hemolytic anemia for example malaria is a disease if you look at the malarial cycle you will find that rbcs are broken down when merozoites malarial merozoites are released from rbc malaria is a disease as a result of malaria rbcs are broken down as a part of pathogenesis this is also called hemolytic it is going to complicate into hemolytic anemia this is called acquired if somebody has got mismatch blood transfusion again the rbcs are broken down by mismatch antibodies again you are going to develop hemolysis of rbc leading to hemolytic anemia it is called acquired so there are a group of hemolytic anemia which are acquired and there are there is a group of hemolytic anemias which occurs only in genetically predisposed person normal person will not have that hemolytic anemia 
unless somebody somebody is genetically predisposed that group is called hereditary hemolytic anemia so hemolytic anemia is classified on the basis of whether it is acquired hemolytic anemia or they are hereditary hemolytic anemia if you go through your books you will have number of diseases in acquired hemolytic anemia number of diseases where you have acquired hemolytic anemia i just mentioned you one of the disease called malaria in malaria you have acquired hemolytic anemia is somebody and most of the most of the type of hemolytic anemia are because of type 2 hypersensitivity type 2 hypersensitivity we will discuss about uh, risks about these types and various diseases which are leading to acquired hemolytic anemia let us talk about hereditary hemolytic anemia the hereditary hemolytic anemias include a very common disease in our society nowadays in pakistan is thalassemia thalassemia is a hereditary hemolytic anemia sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia is a type of hereditary hemolytic anemia spherocytosis spherocytosis is another type of hereditary hemolytic anemia there is another hereditary hemolytic anemia which is for g6pd hemolytic anemia the person is genetically having deficiency of g6 g6pd deficiency so the four it includes four diseases and hereditary hemolytic anemia so let us summarize that hemolytic anemia are acquired or they are hereditary and acquired you have thalassemia sickle cell anemia hysterocytosis and g6 deficiency another group of anemia in classification beside hemolytic anemia say the person does not have hemolysis still he has got anemia it means that the bone marrow where the rbds are the bone marrow is not producing rbcs production of rbc is stopped in bone marrow this is one of the cause of anemia if rbcs are not produced you will have less number of rbcs in circulation and in turn you are going to have anemia decrease production of rbcs from bone marrow now let us see the diseases in which the production of rbcs 
are degrees in boldness. Number one, the hormone or the protein factor which is released from kidney. This hormone stimulates the RBC production. If you do not have this hormone or in the protein factor, your bone marrow will be suppressed. And in turn, you're going, going to have anemia. This hormone is produced in kidney. So anybody who has got chronic renal failure, his both kidneys are not functioning. A chronic renal failure, you will find many patients in hospitals. Chronic renal failure patient is not going to release a rhizopoietin factor. So they are going to develop anemia because there is increase, decreased production of RPC. Number two. Bone marrow is not producing RBC because it is encroached. It is occupied by what? It is occupied by malignant tissue. Like Leukemia, a lymphoma, like patient having metastasis in bone marrow. These malignancies, they encroach the bone marrow and suppress the or replace the Early, early precursors of RBC cell. So whenever RBCs are not producing or not produced by bone marrow, the one reason is that there is no erythropoietin factor. Another reason is that the bone marrow is encroached by malignant seeds. We'll let us talk about the malignancies of the white blood cell, leukemia, lymphoma, or malignancy anywhere in the body has metastasized into the bone marrow. So this is the reason the person is not having uh, uh, this is the reason the person is having anemia. Number three, beside a less erythropoietin factor, beside the bone marrow is occupied by malignancy, the third reason for having bone marrow suppression is the side effect of drugs the side effect of the drugs. There are many drugs commonly used, commonly used, which are going to suppress your bone marrow. You keep it in mind. The commonest drugs which are used in our medical field are chemotherapy of the cancer. chemotherapy of the cancer. Although all the chemotherapic agents, all the chemotherapic agents which are used for the treatment of malignancy, they have a very common side effect and that is bone marrow suppression. 
bone marrow suppression. So whenever an oncologist who is treating a cancer patient and putting him on chemotherapy agent, he has got a very strong vigilance whether the person is going to develop the bone marrow suppression or not. So he will have a watch on his blood CP, number of RBC. The other common drugs which are having effect on bone marrow are antibiotics. Antibiotics. The other common drugs which are having effect on bone marrow and the suppressed bone marrow are analgesic. Analgesics. One has to be very careful when you are, they are using analgesic. They have to have a watch on this side effect that it is going to suppress the bone marrow. Besides that, radiation, it is also going to cause bone marrow suppression. Besides that, there are many infectious agents, especially virus, like dengue virus, or oh, most of the time. The viral diseases, they have some element of bone marrow suppression, milder or severe, but it is noticed more in dengue virus infection. Even in malaria, which causes hemolytic anemia, acquired hemolytic anemia, it is having an unexplained effect on the bone marrow. It causes bone marrow suppression. So let us summarize the bone marrow suppression or decreased production of RBC results from number one, encroachment of the bone marrow by malignancy. Number two, the drug effects like chemotherapy agent, like antibiotic, like analgesic drugs, radiation. Besides that, you have certain systemic viral infection like dengue fever. So this is the classification of anemia. And you will find this classification in any book. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. You can study all of these diseases in the books. But the most important thing which I understand as a doctor, as a new nascent doctor, what I understand that you must realize that this is very common phenomena. Number one. Number two, that anemia is a, not a disease. Anemia is not a disease. Not at all. It is the result of a disease. If anemia is a disease, then it's very simple that you just replace the blood. Very simple. It's not a disease. It is the result of a disease. If, for example, somebody has got, somebody has got malaria. Malaria is a disease. And as a malaria, the person develops anemia. For example, somebody has got chronic malaria. He will present to you with severe anemia. But you have to know that what is the cause of anemia? 
this anemia itself is not a disease it is the complication or after effect of a disease so as a doctor when you see a patient of anemia first of all you appreciate clinically how anemia looks like that is matter of practice once you think that it is anemia you go document it by asking a simple investigation that is blood cp complete blood picture where there are around 10 parameters if you look at blood cp picture if you look at blood cp report there are around 10 parameters more than 10 parameters those 10 parameters will guide you what is the cause of anemia number 2 once you determine that it is anemia by looking at decreased concentration of hemoglobin then you decide what is the cause of anemia now you look at the classification but before that you just recall your knowledge what is the commonest cause of anemia now this exercise is called provisional diagnosis what now we are going as a doctor what we are going to do as a doctor it is called provisional diagnosis and it is only possible that you have a background of the knowledge plus you have a good clinical sense plus you have a very logical you are able to relate things together in iron deficiency anemia you will have decreased hemoglobin but you look at the other parameters you will find that the rbcs are very small they are macrocytic when you look at the color of rbc you will find that they are hypochromic once you find these two parameters abnormal you always think of iron deficiency anemia but there is another disease which is also commonly found in our society that is called thalassemia it will give you exactly same picture if you take the blood cp of a person having anemia the picture of iron deficiency anemia and the picture of thalassemia is more or less same now here you have to decide whether it is iron deficiency anemia or thalassemia then you ask for some other investigation which will determine whether it is iron deficiency or it is thalassemia you ask for serum iron level it is always low in iron deficiency of course in thalassemia it is higher it means that it is not iron deficiency anemia it is thalassemia once you decide it is iron deficiency anemia because serum level is low then it is not enough still it is not enough you have just established that it is iron deficiency anemia now you call you, you you think of the causes what are the causes of iron deficiency it is not enough 
Is it because of the decreased intake of iron? Number one, because you are going to treat a patient. Is this deficiency of iron is because of decreased intake? Suppose it is not because of decreased intake, then it might be malabsorption. The iron person is taking iron, but it is not being absorbed. You have to mm -hmm. determine it. Suppose it is not a malabsorption. Then what is the reason? Person is taking iron. Person does not have malabsorption syndrome. Then you think of some other causes where iron is lost. In spite of taking it, in spite of normal absorption, still the person is not having enough iron, then you think of the causes, other causes. And the other causes beside that is the person is losing blood. Chronic blood loss. Now you have to determine where the person is losing blood. Now you take a very good history, clinical history. Is this man bleeding from gut? The commonest reason of losing blood from gut is piles, rule out piles. Is this man having a malignancy which is losing blood? You ask for some other investigations. Is this man having hematuria? You have to take a good history. Then you come to know that the poor man has got renal stones. And because of renal stone, he is bleeding. There are some other causes of hematuria, multiple causes of hematuria, of course. But you have to reach to a disease which is leading to iron deficiency anemia. If it, she happens to be a female, if she is a young female, then you take a proper history of menstrual cycle. If she is an old lady, then you think of certain gynecological problems, especially prolapse of uterus. Often in old age, people have prolapse of uterus and they do bleed. Or if a young patient, a child having a child having iron deficiency anemia, it is established. So where is iron going? Definitely he is losing. Then you think of the worm infestation, like hookworm infection, which is very common, especially in rural areas, children of rural areas. It's very common. And if it is an infant having iron deficiency anemia, then you think of decrease in type of iron, or the baby is having a milk that does not contain iron. So it is not enough that you make a diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia, but you have to pinpoint a disease which is leading to iron deficiency anemia. It is a matter of practice. You have to take it very seriously. Suppose somebody has got decreased hemoglobin and you find that his mean corpuscular volume, MCP, is very high. You have made a diagnosis, yes. that it is macrocytic anemia and macrocytic anemia is because of vitamin B12 deficiency or because of folic acid deficiency. Simple blood CPE report will determine the person has got macrocytic anemia 
not iron deficiency anemia, not thalassemia. Sir, it is macrocytic anemia. Sir, it is because of either vitamin B12 deficiency or because of folic acid deficiency. Now the question is, what is the cause of vitamin B12 deficiency or folic acid deficiency? You have to determine the cause. If somebody has got B12 deficiency, you think of many diseases in which you have vitamin B12 deficiency. The most important is the loss of intrinsic factor in tonic gastritis, autoimmune tonic gastritis. It is a disease. This disease will lead to anemia, macrocytic anemia, because in this disease, intrinsic factor is not synthesized, not formed, which is mandatory for the absorption of vitamin B12. So macrocytic anemia itself is not a disease. It is a complication of a disease. And here, the disease is autoimmune chronic gastritis. This is what we have to determine. Suppose the person does not have autoimmune gastritis, chronic gastritis, his intrinsic factor is normally synthesized, then what is the reason of vitamin B12 deficiency? You got to determine. Possibly, the vitamin B12 is not absorbed from ileum. This is the ileum where it is absorbed, something wrong with ileum. There is a possibility that in certain people, sometimes you remove ileum due to some reason, surgical removal. Or maybe the person has got intestinal tuberculosis, his ileum is destroyed, his mucosa is destroyed in ileal region or he has got Crohn's disease. See, macrocytic anemia will guide you what is the disease. Either he has got autoimmune chronic gastritis. If it is not, he has got malabsorption syndrome, either because of tuberculosis, intestinal tuberculosis, because intestinal tuberculosis the ileal mucosa is destroyed and B12 is not absorbed. Or he has got a Crohn's disease. Again, the vitamin B12 is not reabsorbed or from that part of ileum. Or the person has got ileal resection due to some reason. So this is the way you approach and you make a diagnosis because your aim is to treat a patient. Your aim is to treat a patient. If somebody has got folic acid deficiency, the commonest reason in our society having folic acid deficiency is in pregnancy. In pregnancy, the requirement of folic acid is decreased, increase, increase. And often, the pregnant women, they develop macrocytic anemia because of folic acid deficiency. So, as a part of antenatal care, if you go to the gynae ward, you will often see that they are being prescribed folic acid routinely. It is just to avoid that they may develop folic acid deficiency. If somebody has got malignancy, extensive malignancy in the body, where the where the you have rapid turnover, rapid, rapid proliferation of the cell, again, in such people having people having malignancy like leukemia, lymphoma, they all often they develop the folic acid deficiency, and they may present with macrocytic anemia. 
If somebody has got anemia, because hemoglobin is decreased, and you look at RBC size, and you find it is normal, normocytic means the size of RBC is normal. Remember, one of the ways you classify anemia on the basis of morphology, macrocytic anemia, microcytic, macrocytic anemia, microcytic anemia, and normocytic anemia. Now, if somebody has got anemia and his RBC size is normal, then definitely it is not iron deficiency, it is not thalassemia. It is not B12 deficiency, it is not folic acid deficiency. Because the RBC size is Lila. normal. Then you think of bone marrow suppression. You think of some of the hematoid, uh, you think of hemolytic diseases. Excluding thalassemia, excluding thalassemia, because in thalassemia you have microcytic RBC. Whenever there is macro, micro, not macro, micro, normocytic anemia, whenever there is normocytic anemia, you think of number one, bone marrow suppression, you think of hemolytic anemia, excluding thalassemia, excluding thalassemia. Suppose it is a bone marrow suppression. Suppose it is a bone marrow suppression. And you want to confirm it is bone marrow suppression. You look at number of RBCs. If you see the parameter of blood CP, you get a report of blood CP. There are 10, 12 parameters. On the top is hemoglobin concentration, second is hematocrit, the third is uh, size of RBC, size of RBC, and number of RBCs. If you look at number of RBCs, they are always below normal in bone marrow suppression. RBC size is normal, but number of RBCs are decreased. Normally, they are around 3.5 to 4.5 million per cubic millimeter. In case of bone marrow suppression, hemoglobin is low. The RBC size is normal. It is called normocytic anemia. And you look at number of RBCs, they are decreased. That indicates that it is bone marrow suppression. Now, if you look at number of WBCs, they are also decreased. If you look at the number of platelets, they are also decreased. There is a possibility that, that all the series from the bone marrow are decreased, when it happens like this, number of RBC decrease, platelets, number of platelets decrease, number of WBCs also decrease. It is called pancytopenia. So it is definitely bone marrow suppression involving all the lineage of bone marrow cell. But sometimes, yes, you have selective suppression of bone marrow lineage cell, only RBCs. Anyway, in bone marrow suppression, if you look at blood CP, the number of RBCs are decreased, platelets are decreased, WBCs are decreased, and the size of RBC is normal it is definitely anemia due to bone marrow suppression. Due to 
बोन मेरो सेपरेशन से इफ ए पर्सन हैज गॉट एनीमिया आरबीसी साइज इज नॉर्मल नंबर ऑफ आरबीसीज आर डिक्रीज बट प्लेटलेट्स आर नॉर्मल डब्ल्यूबीसीज आर नॉर्मल देन यू थिंक ऑफ hemolytic anemia excluding thalassemia shall i repeat it anyway i repeat if you have only decrease in number of rbc but platelets are normal wbcs are normal then you not only think of bone marrow suppression you always think of hemolytic anemia because number of rbc which are produced from bone marrow are normally produced but when they come into circulation they get destroyed so you always think of hemolytic anemia now you have to determine suppose it is hemolytic anemia it is not bone marrow suppression you ask only one investigation beside blood cpt that is called reticulocyte count the reticulocyte count normally it is one person in the circulation if the bone marrow is normal is normally functioning if bone marrow is suppressed reticulocyte count is zero if bone marrow is suppressed reticulocyte count is zero if bone marrow is active only the rbcs are being destroyed in circulation then reticulocyte count is always higher than normal then always you reach to a point of diagnosis that this anemia this normocytic anemia is because of hemolysis circulatory destruction of rbcs when you have reached that it is hemolytic anemia then you have to determine it is acquired hemolytic anemia or it is genetically predisposed hemolytic anemia or hereditary uh, hemolytic anemia again now it depends upon your history and your knowledge if you know about thalassemia thalassemia is excluded if you know about sickle cell anemia you think of particular investigation sickling cell test if it is spherocytosis you have to ask for a special investigation and that is called uh i will tell you later on but in that test we see the osmolar fragility of rbc yeah osmolar rbc fragility rbc fragility osmolar rbc fragility test if you think that is it is it is uh, glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency then you ask for this enzyme level it is always deficient so this is the way you reach to a diagnosis i think the time is almost 7 and you have any queries you can always ask by writing Can you hear me? If you have any queries, you can always ask me by writing. I'm giving you five minutes.
if only one of you interested to ask question, I can always open my mic. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. 